ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words and the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we really invent into this religion of us wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah Everything we need to invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ Every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire from ma'amma ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah says, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنْ مُنْكَرُ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means you, you upholders and believers and implementers of Tawheed, those who believe in the oneness of Allah and worship Allah alone without any partners, and who follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and his sunnah. <clears throat> you are the best people raised up for mankind because you enjoin the ma'roof, the good, from Tawheed to all the righteous deeds, and you forbid the munkar, the evil, from shirk, to all the evil and sinful deeds, and you believe in Allah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, two days after Eid when we had Jum'ah, we reminded ourselves just how even in those two days we saw the people slip. And we reminded ourselves that the ulama, the scholars, may Allah preserve them, they, have, they said that if someone resorts back to what they were upon before Ramadan in terms of sin, in terms of يعني, disobedience, then there's a question to whether their siyam, their fasting was accepted. Allah, He said, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Fasting was prescribed upon you, on us, on this ummah of Muhammad Wasallam, like it was prescribed on those before you so that you may achieve taqwa, so that you can learn how to keep your duty to Allah at all times, so you would fear Allah at all times. So you would obey Allah and His Messenger وسلم, at all times. And you would stay away from sin and disobedience. So here we are again, reminding ourselves of what we reminded ourselves. Just a couple of weeks ago, Allah He said, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَدَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَاتَ Allah said, do not be like her who undoes her thread after she has sewn a blanket or sewn something, a garment that has become so strong. We reminded ourselves, who was foolish, stupid, dumb enough to build a home, spend time, energy, money, then once it's built and you have the key and you can go in it and live in it, you go and you light it on fire. Who was foolish enough to spend months and money, months of time and money and energy sewing a garment, a blanket of sorts, then right when you're done and it can be used to protect you and keep you warm, you go and you pull its string so that it undoes everything you did. This is the similitude of what the Ummah of Muhammad has been, is upon and has been showing in these two weeks plus since Ramadan has passed. So where is our istiqamah? 
Ayman istiqama ya ibad Allah, O servants of Allah, where is your firm hold, your steadfastness upon the deen of Allah? An Abi Amr, wa qila Abi Amrata Sufyan ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu qal, qultu ya Rasulullah, qul li fil islami qawlan, as'al, la as'alu anhu ahadan ghayrak. قال قل آمنت بالله ثم استقم. رضي الله عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن هذا الحديث أو he was asked by Sufyan ibn Abdullah he said oh messenger of Allah tell me a phrase tell me something in Islam a statement about Islam such that I don't gotta ask nobody after asking you he said say I I believe in Allah I believe in Allah ثم استقم and then be steadfast upon this remain firm upon this. So we see again in a few words, the entirety of Islam will can encompass your success in this life and the next. To believe in Allah and then to be firm upon this. Especially after Ramadan. Ramadan was that reminder, that recharge, that proof to yourself that you could do what Allah has asked of you, that Allah has not asked of us more than we can handle or more than we can bear. This belief isn't only to say it as a statement, but to put it into action. لأن الإيمان, because Iman, تصديق القلب is the belief in the heart. والقول على اللسان and the statement of the tongues. والعمل في الجوارح and it is the actions of the limbs. It is not enough to say I believe and not put it into action. So adhere to belief by fulfilling what is obligatory. Staying away from the haram. So this steadfastness in the belief of Allah <coughs> and following the sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu doing all the righteous actions, this is all part of istiqama, all part of that steadfastness and firm hold on Islam. So he said, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ Say, I believe in Allah. ثُمَّ The implication, that steadfastness, ثُمَّ stakim, You cannot have istiqama unless your belief is there. This is the importance of tawheed. We will never stop talking about tawheed. And the aqeedah of the salaf al salih the aqeedah, the creed of the righteous predecessors. All the good actions, all the good deeds, prayers, fasting, none of it means nothing. None of it means anything. Unless you have that tawheed in place. Tawheed al-uluhiyya, that you worship Allah alone without partners. You don't make dua to anyone or anything except to Allah. You don't worship anyone or anything except for Allah. Tawheed al rububiyyah that you affirm Allah as the Lord of the heavens and the earth. You do not stray from this. Yes, there's malaika, angels he assigned to do such and such, but this is all by his choice, not because he is not capable to do it himself. What Tawheed al Asma'i was sadat to believe and affirm Allah's beautiful names and attributes and descriptions and not to change them unless we have a dalil for them meaning something other than what they are. This istiqama according to Ibn Rajab, he said it is following the straight path, is Salat al Mustaqim. Al-Deen al-Qayyim, the straight and proper and pure religion, without turning to the right and the left. Listen to what Allah says when He refers to istiqama in the Qur'an. He says, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكَ وَلَا تَدْغَوْ إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Allah says what means. In Surah Hud, Therefore stand firm on the straight path as you have been commanded. And those who turn in repentance with you and do not transgress from the straight path, Allah sees everything that you do. Allah sees everything that you do. Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal, He also said to His Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, Allah said, so unto, what means, so unto this religion, invite to the people, unto this deen. Call the people to come into Islam and stand steadfast as you are commanded and do not follow their desires. This istiqama is something we've been commanded to by our Lord and by our Prophet wasallam. So be steadfast. And this means opposing your desires, opposing what your desires calls you to in terms of fulfilling them. Reject those for the sake of being firm upon what Allah and His Messenger called you to. So if someone truly seeks to fulfill the requirements of istiqama, he turns to the Qur'an, because it was revealed for this purpose. Shahrul Ramadan al-ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. 
Within the Nas Hudayinat in the Huda al Quran, the month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran, the guidance for mankind, the istiqamah, how you can be upon firm, a firm ground with respect to your deen and with respect to your Lord. This was what came in the Book of Allah. We recited it for days upon days in the month of Ramadan, and so soon after Ramadan is gone, we act like we never even heard the Quran, or we don't know about it, or we don't know that it even exists. This steadfastness upon the Book of Allah, this was why the message was gave, given to us, to be firm upon its teachings and to implement it the best you can. So you fulfill the Qur'an, the month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Qur'an, the guidance for mankind, the clear proofs for the guidance, the criterion between right and wrong, every answer you need is in it. مَا فَرَّطْنَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Nothing was neglected from this book, said Allah Azza wa Jal. We neglected nothing from this book. It is there, ready for us to take hold of it if we want to be of those whom Allah is pleased with. Allah says, إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمٌ Allah says what means it is not except a reminder to the world for whoever wills amongst you to take the right course. يَسْتَقِيمٌ To be on that right course, to be on that right path, to be firm upon the deen of Allah. In the Qur'an, Allah, He stated the result of proper istiqamah. Don't think you have a boring life if you're upon istiqamah. Don't think and look at all the others and the fun they might be having, the wealth they might be bathing in, in terms of wealth and riches. This is nothing. And it will be nothing. Allah has promised you much greater than what is in this dunya if you have istiqamah. The result of that istiqamah, <clears throat> Allah Azza wa Jalla, He said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّمَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Allah says what means in Surah Fussilat. Verily, those who say, Rabbun Allah, those who say, Our Lord is Allah alone without partners. Pay attention. This means that you do not worship for the life of you. You do not worship or pray or, or, or make supplication to or dua for or sacrifice for anything or anyone other than Allah Azzawajal, alone without partners. So all that stuff that's done at the graveyard, get rid of it, don't do any of those actions. All of this stuff you may do thinking you're calling upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam billah, something he sweat for, died for, to implement that you only worship Allah, not me, meaning not himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet we have those going headfirst into those deviant actions. Tawheed is essential. Say, I believe in Allah alone. Our Lord is Allah alone. And stand firm and set fast upon this. You have to put it into action. This ain't some, you know, shake and bake religion where you just say, I believe, and that's it, you're going to go to Jannah. Verily, those who say, Our Lord is Allah alone, and stand firm and set fast, on them will descend the angels at the time of their death, saying, Do not fear, do not grieve, do not be saddened, but receive glad tidings of the paradise which you have been promised. We have been your friends, your protectors in the life of this world, and we will be your friends and your protectors in the akhirah. There in the hereafter, therein you shall have all that your souls desire, and therein you will have all that you ask for. A hospitable gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the oft forgiving, the most merciful. A gift, a blessing from Allah, the most forgiving, the most merciful, for those who are steadfast upon their deen. So believing in Allah, remaining steadfast upon, look at the benefits. The support of the angels in this life. The angels making dua for you. The angels asking Allah to forgive you and have mercy on you. The angels, your guardian angels, helping you to make the right decisions. And in the akhirah, when that soul is taken out of your body, the malaika will run to the good soul. Ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. Ayyatuha nafsul tayyiba al hasana. O good, righteous, pure, clean soul. Come out to the forgiveness of Allah and to His pleasure. And angels will rush to this soul. 
with hanout min hanout al-jannah, perfumes from the perfumes of jannah, with aksan min aksan al-jannah, with shrouds from the shrouds of jannah. Not these white, plain sheets that we see in this life when we bury our deceased. But once from the paradise, once from heaven, once from jannah. Or you can have the opposite, ayyatuhan nafsul khabitha. O malicious, evil, wicked soul. Ukhruji ila saqatan min Allah wa ghadab. Come out to the wrath of Allah and to his anger. Which one do you want to come out to? If you believe in Allah and you have this istiqamah, the angels will help protect you and support you in this life and the next. At the time of death, the difficult time, the angels will give you glad tidings. Don't be afraid. Don't distress. Ahead of Yom Al-Qiyamah, at the time of your death, when the soul is taken out of you, don't distress, do not be afraid. لا تخف ولا تحزن. Do not be afraid, giving you glad tidings of paradise. You'll be led to Jannah and have what you desire. كما قال الله في الحديث القدسي أعددت لعباد الصالحين ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر. Allah in the Hadith Qudsi, He said, I have prepared for my righteous slaves what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what can't even occur to the human heart. You're promised it if you just stand firm upon what Allah revealed in the Quran and what He gave to His Messenger Muhammad in His Sunnah. And then you will have paradise, Jannah for eternity, and Allah will be pleased with you and will bless you. What greater gift than knowing that your Lord, your Creator, who put you on this earth, and you could follow your desires, you could fulfill every desire your body or your mind or your soul or your heart has, but you refused it for Allah's pleasure. That day He'll be pleased with you and say, Oh, for the agenda. That day He'll be pleased with you and say, Enter into paradise. This is the promise for those who are upon istiqamah. The istiqamah of the actions, the istiqamah of the heart, the istiqamah of the tongue. The key to this istiqamah being upright and steadfast on the straight path. Path, the soundness of the heart. أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ إِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ The Prophet is saying in the authentic hadith, indeed in your body is a morsel of flesh. If it's sound, the rest of you will be sound. If it's corrupt, the rest of you is going to be corrupt. Indeed, that piece of flesh is your heart. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم إن العبد ليتكلم بالكلمة من رضوان الله لا يلقي لها بالا يرفعه الله بها درجات وإن العبد ليتكلم بالكلمة من سقط من سقط الله لا يلقي لها بالا يهوي بها في جهنم. رواه البخاري. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, a person will make a statement that is pleasing to Allah, but he won't give much attention to it. He's used to doing good deeds. He used to, he's, he knows what is pleasing to Allah. He gets his body, his mind, his tongue used to these things. So Allah will be pleased with it. He'll get so used to it, thinking that it's not much, but it'll be heavy with Allah. Heavy with Allah and reward. And He'll raise him his rank. And a person makes a statement that is displeasing to Allah. Although he doesn't give it much concern. He's following his desires and his lust. He doesn't pay attention to his speech. Due to it, he will be flung into the hellfire. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ يَضْمَنْ لِي مَا بَيْنَ لِحْيَيْهِ وَمَا بَيْنَ رِجْلَيْهِ أَضْمَنْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, which is authentic in Sahih al-Bukhari, <coughs> whoever guarantees for me what is between his jawbones, يعني his tongue, his lisan, his speech, what he says, and what is between his two legs, meaning of his private parts, يعني he doesn't commit zina with them, and commit haram with them, then I guarantee for him or her paradise. I guarantee for them jannah. Indeed, another hadith, in the Muslim Imam Ahmed, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لَا يَسْتَقِيمُ إِيمَانُ عَبْدٍ حَتَّى يَسْتَقِيمَ قَلْبَهُ وَلَا يَسْتَقِيمُ قَلْبَهُ حَتَّى يَسْتَقِيمَ لِسَانَهُ In this hadith which is authentic, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the faith of a person will not be straight and sound until his heart is made straight and sound. And his heart will not be straight and sound until his tongue is made to be straight and sound. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, <clears throat> there is an ayah showing that no one will be perfect at this istiqamah, at being firm upon this and not making mistakes or erroring or getting into sin. But they will be deficient. But this is why after Allah, He mentioned istighfar, seeking forgiveness. Allah says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشْرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهٌ وَاحِدٌ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا إِلَيْهِ 
وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ وَوَيْلُ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ Allah says in Surah Fussilat, again, وَإِذْ Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi tell him, I am but a human being like yourselves, but it has been inspired, inspired to me that your God, your Ilah, is one Ilah, He is one God, the only one worthy of worship alone with our partners. So take the straight path, فَاسْتَقِيمُ لَهُ Take the straight path to Allah Azza wa Jal and be firm upon this. And when you get pushed aside or when you deviate or when you go this way or that way in terms of disobedience, ask for His forgiveness and woe to the mushrikeen. Punishment, humiliation be to those who disbelieve and those who worship in association with Allah, other partners. A hadith of the Prophet ﷺ makes it even clear, أَيُّهَا nas. إِنَّكُمْ لَن تُطِيقُوا أَوْ لَن تَفْعَلُوا كُلَّ مَا أُمِرْتُمْ أُمِرْتُمْ بِهِ وَلَكِنْ سَدِّدُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا In the authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, O oh people, you're not able to do, or you're not gonna do, all that you are asked of, or all that you're ordered to do. But instead, try to be upright. This should be a fight, a battle, that you don't sin. Not that you just go into the sins and say, Oh, this is some haram I do, at least I do all this good. No. Fight every sin you do. Trying to be steadfast. Trying to do as best as you can. Alright? Instead, try to be upright. Try to have the istiqama and have glad tidings. In the end, the reward will be for you. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Ramadan has come. We were blessed to be able to live during it and make it through it. But now what will we do? The signs of the acceptance of our fasting, our prayers, our charity is that we remain upon, we remain upon what we were upon during Ramadan. We prove to Allah for a whole month that we're capable of fasting, that we're capable of giving in charity, that we're capable of praying and praying extra, that we're capable of coming to the masajid, that we're capable of doing everything He's commanded us to do. So now the onus is on our necks, our shoulders, our backs, to continue upon that. And this was the Sahaba. They had the effect of Ramadan for six months, and the next five, they were still upon that, they were preparing for the next Ramadan by doing the same actions. And this is why Allah gifted us with the month of Ramadan. Don't be foolish, don't be dumb and stupid, don't be lazy, and go back to what you were upon before Ramadan, but be upon what you were upon during Ramadan. Ask Allah for this istiqama, for this firmness. The requirements of the istiqama, quickly, it's required of you to good, do good deeds. It's not enough you say, I believe. It's not enough you say, La ilaha illallah. You have to do the righteous deeds. Exert yourself to perform them. Push yourself to perform them. With those required deeds, stay in the halal. It's not worth it to go to the haram. You will not see any benefit that, it is, per- that is permanent. It will always show up harming you. And if you don't see it in this life, you'll see it in the worst of places, in your grave or on qiyamah. Act upon knowledge. العلم قبل القول قول والعمل كما قال إمام البخاري رحمه الله. He said that knowledge comes before speech and action. In this deen, in Al Islam, it's not like these other religions. In 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 Al Islam, knowledge comes before speech and action. You don't do it unless there's evidence that it was done. You don't say it unless there was evidence that it was said. Don't come up with your own ways of implementing the Quran and the Sunnah. When we have the best of mankind, كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, الله عليه وسلم خير الناس قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم. When we have documentation of the best of mankind, as the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, the best of generations is my generation, me and the Sahaba. ثم الذين يلونهم then those who followed them, the Tabi'een. Then those who followed them, the Tabi'een. Go back to the is- to the Asani, to the Sanad, to the Snad of the Ahadith. Go back to the narrations of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Single out Allah, Mufrasina Nahuddin, in worship, purely just seeking Him with sincerity, seeking to please Him and perform the deeds in the manner they were ordered. 
Stay away from exaggeration in the deen. وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْغَلُوهُ فِي الدِّينِ Stay away from exaggerating in the deen because it destroyed the people before you. Do not take the deen to any extreme. Have a deen wasat. This is a deen that follows the middle path. Not your delineation or changing of the middle path. The way the deen was revealed is the middle path. So follow it, my brothers and sisters in Islam. The means to this istiqama. How can I achieve that istiqama? Ta'ahadu had al Qur'an. As the Prophet he said, safeguard this Qur'an, recite it, read it, learn it, implement it, teach it, reckon yourself, kama qala Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, hasabu anfusikum, judge yourselves, reckon yourselves, qabla an tuhasabu, before you're questioned and reckoned by Allah. Question yourselves, wa awzun wa anfusikum, qabla ma tuhuzun wa imam Allah. Weigh yourself and your deeds before they're weighed by Allah azza wa jal. Strive to improve yourself. Sincerely make dua to Allah. A dua who an ibadah. Dua is the essence of ibadah of worship. You're begging Allah. You're showing Allah you need Him. That you are not capable without Him helping you and guiding you and aiding you. <clears throat> Acquire the authentic, sound knowledge. Again, going back to ilm. Talabul ilm faridatun ala kulli Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith, seeking knowledge is a farida, an obligation on every Muslim, male and female. You don't want to go to Allah saying, yeah, I bought magazines, yeah, I bought uh, CDs, yeah, I bought uh, apps, uh, whatever you can buy, of anything like that. But no, I didn't. I stayed away from the authentic knowledge. You're only harming yourself if you don't learn your deen. Study and follow the examples of the Prophet ﷺ and the earlier prophets. Stick to the Islamic community, the friends who are upon taqwa, friends who will remind you to pray, remind you to drink with your right hand and put on your right shoe first, remind you to say alhamdulillah when you sneeze, remind you to cover your mouth and hold back the sound when you yawn. Stick with those friends. Those might be small things to your eyes. They're huge with Allah Azza wa They help you make yourself firm upon this theme. Think about the akhirah, the hereafter, its pleasures and its punishments, and remember that death often. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I read this two weeks ago, and I'll read it again from Sheikh Saleh al Fawzan, Hafidahullah. May Allah preserve Sheikh Saleh al Fawzan for his staunchness to bring the Quran and the Sunnah as it was implemented by the Sahaba, to bring it to us even hundreds of years later. He said, Oh, you who during Ramadan, you, you have a Lord. Have you forgotten that you have a Lord after Ramadan? Oh, you who during Ramadan knew that Allah has obligated five daily prayers for you in the masajid. And you'll get a khutbah about that very soon. Obli- obligating them in the masajid. How do you not know that or that or pretend not to know that after Ramadan? That, yeah, Allah obligated it in Ramadan, but after Ramadan, oh, I forgot that Allah wanted me to do this. Oh, you who during Ramadan knew that Allah has forbidden you for sins. How have you forgotten that of after Ramadan? O oh, you who during Ramadan knew that in front of you is paradise and hellfire, Jannah and Jahannam, and the reward and punishment. How have you forgotten that after Ramadan? O oh, who used to fill the masajid during Ramadan? Who used to read the book of Allah during Ramadan? How have you abandoned them in the Quran after Ramadan? We seek refuge from blindness after having sight and from misguidance after having guidance. In essence, this is the reminder. This is what we're saying when we just go back. The Masajid, Isha, three, four, five, six lines. Now maybe make one full one. Fajr, one line, two lines, maybe even the third in the last ten nights. Now not even making a full one saf. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah is not foolish. He's not stupid. He has full knowledge of everything. You don't have to say, like, this is a bad thing. I'm telling you, He is not. He is the all-hearing, the all-seeing, the all-knowing. We're calling him foolish if we say other than that. If we do other than that. Because we're pretending he can't see us or hear us or he has no knowledge of us. My brothers and sisters in Islam, question yourself, does this sound like the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad What he came for, what he died upon, what he died for and took abuse and beatings for. What he had rocks and dung, feces thrown at him for. Does this sound like his, hum- his ummah? This is why Becca, Becca, Allahumma ummati, ummati, he cried to Allah. He cried to Allah, oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah. He feared for us that we would slip into being lovers of this dunya, not lovers of the akhirah. 
This is why he feared for us. You come to the salah and the masjid 27 times the reward than praying by yourself. You come to the salah and the masjid and it gets rain for you for salah and risha. فَكَأَنَّمَا صَلَّ نِصْفَ الْلَيْلِ أو قَامَ نِصْفَ الْلَيْلِ It will be written for you like you stood half the night in prayer. And then if you follow that up by coming to the masjid for fajr, فَكَأَنَّمَا قَامَ الْلَيْلَ كُلَّهِ It will be like you prayed the whole night in prayer. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the fear. We were given that Qur'an, we recited it, we heard it, we played it, we memorized it, we tried to implement it during Ramadan. But then there's that ayah in Qur'an, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْجُورًا Then there's that reminder that the Prophet will say on the Qiyamah, Oh my Lord, my people have deserted this Qur'an, abandoned this Qur'an. Which group do you want to be in? Those who obey Allah and His Messenger Wasallam, or those who abandon the Qur'an? May Allah make us Ahl al-Qur'an, Ahl Allah wa khasat. Allahumma khil al-Muslimin al-Muslimat, al-Mu'mineen al-Mu'minat, al-Ahyaad min al amat al-Nayya al-Tazmi'a al-Qiyum al-Jib al-Da'wad, Ya Muqallab al-Qulub, Thabbit al-Qulubin ala deenik, Ya Muqallab al-Qulub, Thabbit al-Qulubin ala deenik, Ya Muqallab al-Qulub, Thabbit al-Qulubin ala deenik, اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على عداءك وعداء الدين اللهم انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا في فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم ثبت أقدامهم أقدامهم ونفس قلوبهم وسهل أمورهم وارحم موتاهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين